May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and after the last few years of challenges for all of us, it's more important than ever. So joining us today to talk about the ways that we can improve our emotional well-being is counselor and Miss North Dakota International, Misty Ibuck. Welcome. Thank you for having me. It's always great to have you on the show because you have just like a glow about you. Aww. And maybe maybe it's the crown, maybe it's the sash, but <laughs> we just love it. Well, thank you. And your singing skills, oh. that was amazing to watch earlier. The things you do on TV, I don't know. I love it. Crazy. So obviously we're talking about mental health. That is a big issue. Um, and I think there's probably a lot of people at home, maybe, and, and myself included, we haven't gotten a lot of sun this year. We haven't yes. gotten a lot of that vitamin D. Seasonal depression probably lasted yes. a little bit longer than we'd like. What are some signs and symptoms to look for that maybe it's time to need to talk to somebody, to go kind of let it out and see if we need some help? Yeah, so I think, you know, that's the thing. Living in North Dakota, we only see the sun for so long. And then also coming out of a pandemic, I'm seeing heightened, you know, anxiety, depression. And so I think some of the signs and symptoms that I most, I see mostly is, you know, just those overwhelming senses of like hopelessness and helplessness, increased sadness, um, losing interest in things that you really used to love to do. Um, you know, even with all of the things that we can do in North Dakota, but we can't really go outside, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's something that's really a challenge. So I really encourage people, you know, even if they have family members or friends who, who recognize a difference in their moods or behaviors, to start reaching out and to just start talking to somebody about some of this. And sometimes that is the biggest hurdle to cross because a lot of times if you're in a depression, it's easy to, you go to work, you go home, you sit on the couch, watch a show, go to bed, and you just repeat the cycle and it's very isolating. Yes. How do you encourage people to, to get out and to just be like, okay, it's time, we need to change this. This isn't a healthy lifestyle. Yes, so I think accountability is huge. I love, you know, I'm somebody who really has to work at getting up at 4.45 to go to the gym, and so I love the accountability. You know, being able to sit down a lot of times with my clients and write interests, like what interests you? What hobbies do you like to do? Who can you do it with? Um, I think another barrier to that are the stigmas in society. And so that's something where I've been working really hard. I'm somebody who has struggled with anxiety most of my adult life. And it's really when I started being open and transparent that I started healing. And so, you know, I really started connecting with people who provided that additional support. So I think when you're looking at those avenues, it's definitely support and accountability. Who's gonna get out there? Who's gonna do these things with you? Who's gonna make it fun? Yeah, that's a big thing. And I think in terms of kind of accountability and vulnerability, it's one of those things like if you don't let people in, you're not gonna get out of your pattern. Like you have to have that vulnerability yes. and you have to be honest about where you're at. Or you, it's one of those things, you, if you don't recognize the problem, you're not going to address it. Yes, right? yes, yeah. absolutely. So that's a big thing. So um, for people maybe that are at home that are like, yeah, you know, I'm fine myself, but I'm dealing with a loved one. I have a husband, I have a parent, I have a child who's dealing with anxiety or depression. What would you suggest to them? Yeah, that, you know, for me, I think that's a really important key component because the family portion of any kind of treatment or therapy is really in a lot of ways what makes or breaks the outcome and the treatment component of it. And so I have a lot of people who just reach out truthfully and just ask to talk to somebody. And what they do is, you know, I like to break down those, those barriers in communication and just really offer a space where they can even come in and just talk about, you know, what are some signs and symptoms you've been recognizing what are some of the concerns that you have and then I kind of just navigate things with them and guide them in a direction that I feel like would be healthy and beneficial for the loved one that may be struggling do you find that in creating that conversation sometimes the person who's dealing with the depression or anxiety is like I did not realize that I was doing that or giving out those signals absolutely I see that a lot of times I think when they start to come into counseling and that's one thing that I just I try to make counseling one of those things that isn't scary I don't want it to have stigmas or stereotypes I want it to be an open space because I was a counselor and a therapist who needed therapy and so I have a lot of times these people who will come in and they had no idea until a loved one started recognizing they were more isolate isolative they um, were more tearful they stopped engaging and lacked interest in things that they used to love 
Oh, that's absolutely heartbreaking. Well, if you know someone that has anxiety or depression, or if you have anxiety or depression, make sure that you get out there, ask for help, approach someone, talk to a loved one. And as always, thank you so much, Misty, for coming on. Yeah. Again, you brighten our day. Thank you. So speaking of summer coming forward, we're adding Antelope Creek to our summer dining spots, and we're going to tell you why next.